Mr. H here. This lesson is about electric potential, potential difference, voltage, and all those terms can be confusing, so I'm going to try to clear them all up for you. We're also going to talk about Ohm's Law briefly and Kirchhoff's rules, the loop and the junction rule. These will all help for the AP Physics 1 course. Let's start by learning about this word potential. You're going to hear it a lot in circuit problems. And I think it's easier to understand this term potential if we can compare it to gravitation. Take a look at this hill. This hill has a particular height and it's in a gravitational field on Earth. You can say that different levels on the hill are at different potentials. You don't have potential energy until you actually put a mass there. Just like you won't have any electric potential energy until you put a charge in a field. The higher you're located on a hill, the more potential you have to fall. And the lower you are on a hill, the less potential you have to fall. If you were to take any two points of different heights, A and B, there's going to be a difference in the amount of potential they have. In circuits, this difference can be measured before and after a circuit component, such as a resistor. Before the resistor, you'll be at a higher potential, and after the resistor, you'll have fallen to a lower potential. The difference, potential difference, is known as voltage. Now we're ready for our first rule, Kirchhoff's loop rule. It's going to be the easiest thing in the world if we think of it gravitationally. The loop rule says, if you make a loop, meaning you start from one place and you come back to the same place, the potential difference across the entire path is a zero. Well, gee, if I start here and I do whatever I want, go wherever, and I end up back there, guess what? I'm at the same potential. Of course there's no potential difference. So what it looks like on a circuit diagram is you could take any loop you want. Let's take this one. And we know that the sum of all voltage across that loop is zero. So I may gain plus V right here at the power supply, but then when I get to the first resistor, I'm going to have to lose half of it there, and I'm also going to have to lose half of it at the other resistor so that it all adds up to zero when I complete the loop. This rule is going to come in handy. For example, if we take this other loop here, we can see that this resistor is completely useless. Why? Because in the closed loop, if the potential difference has to add up to zero, then there couldn't be a difference across the resistor. That would be the gravitational equivalent of running around on a hill, but always staying at the same height. Any current entering the junctions before or after that resistor are just going to end up flowing right past, leaving that leg dead void of any current. So we can redraw the thing without that useless leg. You can see my other video on simple circuits for more reductions like these. We're going to move on to a conceptual illustration of Ohm's Law. What I've drawn for you here is a hill that has one side mowed and one side full of weeds side that's mowed, well that's going to be really easy to fall down the hill. But the side with all the weeds, it's going to take its time because of all that resistance. And that's really the principle behind Ohm's Law. Ohm's Law states that the more resistance, the less flow, and the less resistance, the greater the flow. Now that's talking about electrons in a circuit, and that's illustrated by the formula V equals I times R. So let's use the things we've learned to do a simple example here. I've got a parallel circuit of a 3 ohm resistor in parallel with a 4 ohm resistor, and we have to find the current through each. We're going to use the loop rule and Ohm's law. Let's take this first loop. And uh, in that loop, there's really only two things. There's the power supply, and then there's this 3 ohm resistor. So I know that the potential difference across the 3 ohm resistor, V3 I'm going to call it, has to be equal to 12 volts. And by Ohm's law, that has to be equal to its current, I'm going to use the subscript 3 again, times its resistance. What I'm using is the formula V equals I times R, that's Ohm's law. And now I get... 
I3 is equal to 12 volts divided by 3 ohms, giving us 4 amperes. Now if I did the same thing for the other loop, I will get 3 amps. Now that's just a coincidence that if I just plug in V equals IR for those particular ones, I will get the right answer. That's not how you want to do these problems. You want to draw the loops out and you want to isolate each loop and find the potential across each component before you start applying Ohm's Law. Now we're going to talk about what happens when there's a junction in the circuit and different options for flow of electricity. My gravitational example would be a superhero going down a hill which magically in the middle of it has a waterfall and a mudslide and some rocks and some weeds. Now, given these options, it would be easiest for him to just slide down that waterfall. And that would be pretty fast, pretty conducive to the flow of falling down a hill. The mudslide would be pretty good too. And, you know, these rocks, probably terrible. Probably a lot of resistance slowing him down. So if it's just him, you might think, oh, okay, he's just going to pick the one with least resistance. Game over. But that's not how current in circuits work, because there's not just one electron. So we're going to need a lot more mustachios. Now most of them are going to want to slide down the slide. Woohoo! But, you know, they're not all going to want to wait. So some of them might just decide, you know what, screw that, I'm going down the grass. And somebody else might say, wee, I'm going down the mudslide. You know, and... They will all get down the hill one way or another. Maybe even one of them will climb the rocks if it's available and there's nowhere else to go. Electrons will do the same thing if you bring them to a fork in the road. they got to choose left or right. You know, if they go this way, they're going to have less resistance, so maybe they like that. But not all of them are going to go over there. Some of them are going to go over here and hang out with these two resistors. But you know what? It's going to end up to be proportional. If I've got half as much resistance over here on this side, I'm going to get twice as much current. And conversely, if I got twice as much resistance over here with the two resistors, I'm going to get half as much flow. So whether I'm dealing with electrons coming to a fork in a road or a bunch of mustachios coming down a mountain, either way, I've got a finite amount of units and I cannot have more going into a system than going out or vice versa. So the rule is, the junction rule is, whatever current you have coming up to a junction you have to have the same amount of total current after the junction. And here's what that looks like in the circuit. If you've got I0 coming up to a split, then the amount of current I0 has to be equal to I1 plus I2. And we can use these two rules to prove what I said earlier about a proportional split when you have two different branches of known resistance. So you can use these principles to reduce simple circuits as you will need to in the AP Physics 1 course to find current, resistance, potential difference just about anywhere in a circuit. This has been Mr. H Physics. Thanks for watching.